in aviation we never stop learning and something that also happens in aviation is that we get the test first and then we learn the lesson I'm going to show you some bad landings some errors and some saves this one here is my worst landing ever it doesn't get any closer than this first time into ski jump it was turbulent, windy above my minimum so I usually fly to the backcountry strips and there is hardly any wind especially if it's a new one but I was traveling from far away and wanted to make it the owner of the strip told me that once I'm low I should not attempt a go round also that in these conditions it's common to have a gust of tailwind near the trees and turbulence. All these combinations got me really fast over the street and since I was not attempting to go around I put the airplane into the ground and put it sideways to stop as soon as possible. I'm going to the right on purpose so the wheels are getting more resistant by skidding sideways. So lots of mistakes as a you can see a very close one so it was a terrible approach another mistake is I broke my own rules my own minimums and went into a, an unknown strip in bad conditions I felt bad with myself and as soon as the wind died down a little bit I went out and did uh, free takeoffs and landings lesson learned never go to a unknown strip when the conditions are not that good. I did everything wrong, but not going around for the safety. Here I'm testing the sportsman stall in Costa Rica, many years ago. I have a measuring tape, measuring distances for my landing, practicing for shorter strips. And the airplane just dropped from under me, I stole the airplane, not too high, but still not a pretty landing. I guess this is part of learning the limits of the airplane, no damage was made and gaining more experience. Here we're in Washington, Bursex airstrip, practicing side slip from a big trees into the strip. The problem here is that it was early morning and once we touched down, the grass was frozen, so we didn't have any braking power. As you can see, there's plenty of runway left to brake, but I'm applying the brakes and nothing is happening. We're just skidding over the ice. Finally, it starts slowing down. I was ready to go around, but I felt the tires start to grab so I opted to finish the landing. Another lesson learned, icy grass in the morning. Be aware of that. Here is another perspective. This is another landing later on. Um, the grass was wet but we had much better traction now. Before the first landing we overflew the strip but we could not tell by looking that the grass was icy. Here I'm flying the CG6 Nanchen into Darrington in Washington State. I was trying to do a short field landing to get uh, that into the first exit. I miscalculated and touched down actually before the runway. It was a big hit. The gear in this airplane is very strong. Nothing was damaged. Only my pride was damaged. Pilots, it's good to stay humble because aviation is an activity that can humble you pretty good. 
here is another perspective of the same landing. This was just my fault, miscalculation, trying to learn the limits of the airplane, and I made this mistake. This was a pretty hard landing. Obviously, with all this bouncing, I missed my intersection. I wanted to exit. Part of the training, after a couple of practice rounds, I was doing the first intersection consistently. This is another landing where the mistake is I broke my own rules and my minimums. I was invited to a gravel bar late in the afternoon and my fuel tanks were full. I usually come to gravel bars with low fuel, about 20 gallons, and the reaction of the airplane is very different. When the airplane starts to sink, I just add a little bit of power to keep it the same level. But since it was so heavy, I actually needed to add a lot more power and I didn't. Another lesson learned, don't break your own minimum. This one is just a go around, very low. The advantage of the gravel bars is that most of them have good ways to go around. They are very open. I didn't like what I saw, so I just did a go around. This is a Cessna 180. It's coming a little hot. So he performs a go around late in the tent landing, but it was much better to do a go around than keep trying to land. Who is that? So good job on the pilot's decision. This was a good save. This is just an example of the airplane not running well, so the takeoff could not happen. Good thing that it happened on the takeoff roll, not in the air. Then the pilot fixed it and then did a normal takeoff. This is a mall landing in Amuri, Costa Rica. Big bounce on the landing, but the pilot corrected and saved the landing. and this was his third landing in the movie. This airstrip is very uneven and bumpy. Memalus in Oregon. First we flew the strip. We saw some snow to the side so we were worried about how wet will it be. From the air we could see a patch of mud and wet and water but uh, not much. The rest look dry. We had a bit of a tailwind for the landing, but nothing major. And landing from the canyon is downhill, but uh, it's a pretty approach, so it's more common. So the landing is not bad, but then we start to arrive to a wet section with lots of mud. This 
This airstrip is long, 3,000 feet long. The altitude is 6,700 feet. Density altitude about 7,000 feet. We were heavy, 67 gallons of fuel plus all the camping gear for our three day trip in Idaho. I was worried about a takeoff, so first did a takeoff just myself. I think this has been the longest takeoff roll I ever done in this airplane. Seeing the snow on the sides was a good indicator of how the conditions of the strip would be. Mistake was landing with this heavy airplane in these conditions, suspecting it could be wet and it was wet. Good thing the P-Punk 280 horsepower and the Cessna 182 performed really well. We never stop learning in aviation. This is what I like about it. It keeps you humble. Hope some of you can learn from my mistakes. See you guys.